Hello everybody and welcome back to another Warhammer video. Now this is the first of a new series of videos I'm going to be doing which I'm titling How Can They Fix Blank in Warhammer 3? And I thought it was best to start off this series of videos with how they can fix sieges in Warhammer 3. Now first of all I'm just going to lay out the structure just so you know what to expect and of course you can skip around using the chapters in the description. Now the first thing I'm going to do is identify the problems with the sieges and then I'm going to identify solutions to each of these problems one by one. Now this video is completely comprised of my own opinions so if you don't agree with anything that's totally fine. Leave your opinions down in the comments let's just keep this thing civil. I never claim to be an expert of game design or game coding or anything I'm just talking about this from a purely gameplay as someone that plays the game's perspective. Also, I'm not a law person, so if any of the things or suggestions that I put in here aren't really to do with the law, then um, I, I don't know because I don't know the law, obviously. Again, just talking from a gameplay purely perspective. Just so you know, I also plan to do quite a number of these videos, so if you're interested in this type of content, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. I know it's kind of obnoxious when people say it before the video's even started, but I'm generally quite excited to do a series. I have a lot of ideas for it, so I'd really appreciate it if you decided to stick around. Anyway, without further ado, let's identify the problems with sieges in Warhammer 2. Now the first problem is that sieges in the current game only have two avenues of attack. That means that at most they are coming from two directions at once and while this is easier to manage it's kind of boring and a little stale after you've done one siege you've basically done them all. The next problem is that the maps themselves are also tiny shit. This is a problem in all battles to be honest but that, that's a question for another day. I'm focusing on siege battles here and as it stands siege maps are particularly tiny even in comparison to the other maps in Warhammer 2. Also, minor settlements have field battles rather than fighting in the settlements, even if it doesn't have walls. Now, I know this makes sense from a gameplay perspective of, you know, running out to meet the approaching army to protect the settlements, but I really don't like it and I think I have some better ideas of how it can make it more fun. Next problem is that walls are pretty much pointless for the most part. Flying units can go straight over. As soon as the enemy gets onto the walls, you're at a disadvantage. And getting on and off the walls is just ridiculous. Why do they walk off and teleport to the floor or vice versa? It looks dumb, it ruins immersion, and I hate it. And the final problem with sieges is that gates aren't much better since most monsters can just bash them down faster than a battering ram can get there. And on the side of the defense, when you put your units there to hold the line, it just clumps them up for enemy spells. So you're kind of encouraged to take a smaller, more spread out fight and just really let the gates and walls be taken. Now going back to the first problem, sieges only having two avenues of attack. It's a pretty simple solution. Give us back four walls. Give us back the regular sieges that we see in the Three Kingdoms and Rome and pretty much every other Total War game that isn't Warhammer. It adds a lot more strategy to the game as well as making it a little more believable because what are the chances that in this massive world, every single settlement is built into a corner with only one or two avenues of attack? Now you can attack from several different sides at once or heaven forbid have two players on each team without being on top of each other because we all know if you've ever played a multiplayer siege battle or if you've ever played in the campaign and had your armies backing you up and you've had two arms on the field it pretty much just becomes a mess of units there's not physically enough space in the siege to have two armies it's just it's ridiculous remember those massive videos of eight man battles where there were four ways into each settlement and each side is being defended by an army and being attacked by an entire army Yes, let's have that back, please, because that shit was really, really, really cool. Now, of course, the main issue that I always mention when it comes to this part of sieges is that massive four wall sieges like this lag the shit out of the game. In 3K, they lag, and that is a game with a bunch of more simplified models of men and horses. Throw in the complex modeling of Warhammer races like lizard, rats, and more, and you will have a barely playable experience. Now, this isn't really something I can offer a fix on because all there really is to say is optimize the shiitake mushrooms out of the game, uh, but they could also semi fix this problem by using lower quality textures to make it easier on a PC to render that many units. But I doubt they would be taking a step back in visual quality. I, I just don't think that is something they would want to do, especially with Warhammer 3 trailer looking as beautiful as it does. That being said, I think many players will take some slightly worse textures in exchange for better battling. Now the next problem is the maps being too small. Now the fours have fixed this kind of by having much longer maps and multiple tiers in the settlements, even if there is only one wall. That is really, really, really good. Now if we expand upon this and go back to the four wall settlements and then have multiple tiers inside that so you have the exterior walls and then you have the interior keep where your capture point is and you know you can do the final last stand defense there whilst also having some protection rather than it just being a square in the middle of a village. Now the maps don't need to be huge with empty space but they need to be bigger than this. Make it so I can attack with spaces between all my units. If I have my army and I go control A and I right click and drag them out they shouldn't really easily fill the entire width of the map. It just looks ridiculous. The armies look way too big for the battlefields that they are playing on. Now you could argue that I'm playing on a too large unit size, 
But um, I would argue that's dumb because the unit size is in the game. So why wouldn't I use it? And if I am using it, why does it look so terrible? Again, we don't need massive maps. We just need maps so that I can attack on multiple fronts and sneak up on the enemy and have some actual strategy rather than just clumping all my units and just charging the center place as much as I possibly can. I don't really need to explain this one too much because they have succeeded in doing it in games before this one and it's worked just fine with games like Three Kingdoms. They have massive maps and yes, I know more simplified models, but again, I'm not going to keep repeating myself here. Going back to games like Rome 2 and I'm pretty sure even in Medieval 2, although to be fair, most of the gameplay that I've seen in Medieval 2 has moved the Lord of the Rings mod, but they have some massive sieges and the engine can handle it just fine. So why can't we have massive maps and massive sieges in Warhammer 3? Now, minor settlements having field battles is one of the things I've always hated. It's like, okay, I have my settlement here, I have my garrison, and they'll be really good at defending some walls and defend a village if they can hold their position, and then they decide to charge out of the settlements and attack on an open field where they can more easily get surrounded and they are fighting on equal terrain. I think when you're attacking a settlement, you should always have somewhat of a disadvantage, at least as far as the terrain's concerned. You know, you're going into a village where you don't particularly know the layout that well, uh, the enemy might have some traps or some fortifications somewhere and you can't do anything about that. It's just the nature of attacking someone. They have time to defend. They can see your army marching over and thinking, good God, man, I know we don't have any walls and we can't build them quick enough, but you know, let's make some slight barriers or barricades and spike pits, you know, just to stop them from getting around us. I get that it is to protect the settlement from harm, but why not fortify it anyway before the enemy can get there? If fighting on the field is going to definitely lose the battle and lose the settlement, then um, why won't you just fight in the settlement and try and use the terrain to your advantage, even if it means taking a bit more damage to the settlement? I would like us to be able to place some minor defenses like a couple of little towers or some magical traps depending on your faction. Who would not want to see the equivalent of a Skaven landmine blown up under the foot of a unsuspecting Saurus? <laughs> you could also use your buildings as cover and the enemy can attack these buildings to damage the settlements like they can in other games. This way, even if you don't win the assault, you can do some damage to the settlement anyway and then come back to it later. You can use the street structure to fight on your own terms on the defensive. Each faction could have a couple of unique layouts for settlements in different variations for different parts of the world. So say you are the Lizardmen in Lustra, you have a couple of different layouts for Lustra. Say you are a Lizardman in the Wasteland or in Norska for some reason, or in the mountains, you would have a couple of different layouts. Alternatively, you could just have particular layouts for different parts of the world, you know, use them and move them around very slightly and just replace the building textures with the buildings from that specific faction. Now, next up, we have the walls. And first of all, I'm going to go over the flying problem. Now, flying units make wall sieges kind of pointless since they can, you know, fly over them. So there needs to be some way to defend versus a flying units. Now, I have a couple of suggestions here and I don't know the law legitimacy, so don't get too mad if they're a little bit too out there. Now, as far as I'm aware, magic is a thing for nearly every faction in the game. And the ones that it isn't available for, you know, like the dwarves, they have runes, which could probably you know, be explained away to do the same thing. So surely there is a spell or an enchantment or something that extends the walls into the sky in some sort of dome-based shield, kind of like the thing around Wakanda in Infinity War, you know, a big old dome-based shield of magic that doesn't allow flying units to get over them, at least until a tower has been captured or something, and it makes like a gap in the shield. This will mean that flying units can't just rush straight over and fuck your ranged units in the back. It is the simplest solution, but it would be a little bit strange to have flying units just crash into a magical barrier and you could rush them over the second you take a tower. Now, my other solution, which I think is way more out there, but also way more cool, is that towers are given some sort of flak type cannons that do massive damage to ranged units until they are captured. Now, to specify, this is only against ranged units. They can't attack ground units. That would be way too much if enemies get close, and then all of a sudden, you know, they have a Barrette 50 cal hard scoping them out of the air. That wouldn't be fair. But something like this with a shorter range and a 360 degree firing arc to rapidly kill most flying units means you can still hard dive settlements, but the casualties you take will not really be worth it and it will likely mean you cannot use the units for much outside of just running into the enemy and dying. Instead, you have to capture a tower first to make an opening in the defenses and then funnel through that gap. Now, the main issue that I see with this one is that you would really need to consider your pathing because, you know, you could get rid of a tower and think, oh, cool, my flying units can get in, right click, and then they fly over a tower that hasn't been captured by your guys, and then they get shot to pieces anyway. That would be very frustrating. So, again, this one is way more out there. It's quite cool, but it would be quite difficult to implement, especially on the player side. Now, my third and final solution to this... Oh, wow, that sounded a bit over the top. Now, my third solution to this is have a secondary layer to settlements, like I mentioned before, and also have towers, meaning they need to survive two sets of towers to get in. So, you know, you could have your internal keep in the middle with a bunch of towers firing at the range units constantly. 
and then you could have the external walls that fire the flying units as they come in and then if they get captured you still have the secondary walls so they kind of have to decide which ones they want to take out that being said this is my least favorite idea because what's to stop them just from rushing over the first set of walls and then the second set of walls to stop all of them firing that being said i think multi-layered settlements are for sure something that we need i'm just not sure it is the best counter to flying units either way i think that walls and towers definitely need to see some changes now the next wall problem is as soon as the enemy gets on them you're at a disadvantage now the issue of being at the disadvantage for defending your own walls is a tricky one but i think there may be a rather simple fix instead of having to stand on the walls to capture towers maybe just have it like gate control where you have to stand nearby maybe make it a small area or having to actually right click on the towers with infantry to get them under control say they interact for 10 or so seconds to remove control from the enemy and then 10 or more seconds to put it under their control kind of like iron harvest when you're capturing the flags or capturing the resource buildings also if we did get four-sided settlements how many units would you need to mount all the walls and towers? That is another issue here. Now, if you just have to right click on them once and then boom, they're under your control or they start under the defender's control, that makes sense. And then the enemy can go around and capture the different ones as they see fit if they need to. I also think having a few towers with a wider firing arc but limited range would work a lot better. Maybe even give us the opportunity to place these before battle so that you can really customize what areas you want to defend and what areas you're not really worried about. So towers with this sort of range wouldn't be able to fire on enemies at the other side of the world for the entire battle, but it does mean that you will do more meaningful damage to anything that gets close. And just like in the current game, as you level up your walls, you can level up these towers and the number of them that you can place. Now in the current game, you just find the blind spots of these towers and then they are useless. By giving them a wider arc to fire from, it means that you can't really hide from them and you have to take them out or do something about it. Also, make my walls short, damn it. If I'm trying to have my ranged units fire onto my own walls of the enemies, they shouldn't have to whip out a protractor and a barometer to hit their targets. Also, side pot of issues, ranged units are useless versus enemy towers encroaching onto your walls. So there is no point putting them on the walls when the enemy has towers to get on them with. Now, the simple solution is to give them fire arrows, but I have a whole video planned on battle effects, so definitely subscribe if you want to see that. So yes, make walls shorter, give us better towers. That sounds good to me. Now, the last problem with the walls is that getting on and off the walls, it just looks stupid. And as I mentioned, I hate it. And the way I see it, we have two options here. Now, make the wall short enough that a slight hill on terrain allows them to walk up, just like standing on cliffs on a regular battle map. I believe this was used in Thrones of Britannia and it makes gates a real challenge to attack as you essentially funnel yourself into a choke point when attacking gates and walls since they are literally an uphill battle. Now this would allow large units to also stand on the walls which would be a nice way to make them more useful during sieges. So say the enemy is mounted on your walls and they are funneling units in, boom you can throw in some large units like some croc scores or something to assist your infantry rather than it just being an infantry versus infantry duke out. Because I know a lot of people like to run kind of crap infantry with some powerful monsters. This would allow them to do that without being horrific at sieges. Now all this being said we need to be careful not to make sieges too far in the other way and too easy to defend. I think in the current game they are definitely kind of biased towards the attackers especially multiplayer so I think these changes uh, need to skew a quite a lot of way towards the defense but not too too much now alternatively we can use a system that games like Rome 2 use which means that there are set entry and exit ways onto different sections of the wall this does mean that it can take quite a while for units to get up and down but let's be honest if we're thinking realistically here again realistically within Warhammer it probably would take some time to get up and down the walls they could even use the same code that the towers have for the enemies that are attacking but they're just fixtures on the inside and then there from the start so it's just a little outcropping on the wall on the inside of the settlement. You right click on that and boom, your units just run straight up. It doesn't take too, too long, a little bit longer than it takes right now, but it doesn't look as ridiculous. Now, our final problem is that the gates are naff because monsters can just bash them down faster than a battering ram can get there. And also putting your units in a clump for spells, not too good. So we're going to cover these kind of as one here. So the first issue, I have two words for you, hot oil. Okay, maybe some Warhammer equivalent per faction like Warp Fire for Skaven or Mazda Mundi's Fat Dump Truck for Lizards. Just something to drop on enemies that does a lot of damage when they try to swarm the gates. Make it so barring rams provide protection from this but are slower. So we'll open the gates with less casualties, but it will take them a lot longer. As for the clumping of units problem, I can't really see a way to defend gates without clumping up some units. We could perhaps give gates some sort of magical protection to nearby units that reduces spell damage in the area for both sides, so it's not too unfair on the attackers or the defenders. This might just be one of those issues though that we just kind of have to deal with. Okay, that about wraps up for how I believe they could fix these sieges in Warhammer 3. CA, if you're watching, uh, feel free to take any of my ideas. Uh, just be sure to give me a 5% cut of profits and all credit. Thank you very much. Love you.
So yes, let me know what you thought of my solutions for these problems with these sieges in Warhammer 2. I'm very curious to know what everyone thinks of this. It is a very divisive topic, although I think the one thing we can all agree on is that something needs to change and something needs to get fixed. But yes, let me know in the comments what you think of sieges and how they can be fixed in your opinion. I would love to hear it. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy them, be sure to leave it a like. And, you know, if you want to see more videos like this, as I said, I have quite a number of these planned out for the next couple of weeks. So be sure to hit that subscribe button because you will not want to miss that. There is a lot of stuff I love about Warm 2, but goddamn, there is also a lot of stuff that I really do not like at all. So there is a lot of stuff that we can fix for Warm 3 and make it the most perfect game that it can be. So yes, one more time, thank you so very much for watching. And for now, I've been Colonel Nambers, and I will see you next turn.